Hello, and welcome to Let's Fix Leadership. Today, I have something special for you. Our first guest is coming to talk with us today and help us understand the difference in today's communication and how we show up versus how we did in the past. So our guest today is Heather Lyle. She is a communication and marketing expert, entrepreneur, and a professional problem solver who helps executives and business owners stand out from their competition by creating unique brand positioning based on their personality using the DISC profile. With 20 years of executive level experience, Heather has mastered the ability to cut through the small talk and dig deep into identifying her client's special sauce or uniqueness that sets them apart from their competition to increase leads and sales. So welcome, Heather. It is fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much. I always love talking about communication and leadership. It's one of my favorite topics. So it's going to be good today. It is going to be good. And for our listeners, Heather and I are friends. And so we'll probably just have a great conversation between two yes. friends and everyone else is on the ride to listen with us. <laughs> that, that's right. It's all good. That's right. Heather, tell us about your business, what you do, and how did you get into it? Oh my gosh. I tell everybody, I'm a communications expert. And yes, I know a lot about marketing as well, too, because you have to have your message nailed before you spend any money, time, effort, or energy around your marketing or else it's going to fall flat. And so that's what I do. I help people be able to identify what is their specific, unique brand message based on their personality type. And why that's important is I got so sick and tired of seeing on LinkedIn or on Instagram and the digital space websites professional services people. That's who I mostly work with. All their websites look the same. The lawyers that I work with, I'm like, oh my gosh, can we get rid of the picture of you with your arms crossed across your chest and looking away and not even at the camera? Come on. They all look the same. Surely there's something different and special about you, right? And so asking the questions as to what makes you different, why are you doing the things that you're doing? And then the messaging that we put out into the world needs to reflect that because that way you're going to attract the right client who wants to work with you because you're different. So that's how I got into it. But, you know, it's so funny. I tell everybody I spent 20 years in various leadership level roles. But before I started my own business and we moved to the Dallas area, I was chief of public affairs for a state elected official in Oklahoma. And I'd never worked in government, much less a hotbed of politics and education ever before. And I had to quickly be able to identify and understand the type of person. My, my schedule was every 15 minutes there was somebody new in front of me. And I was having to quickly be able to identify what their needs were and what did I need to say to be able to message myself in a way that would resonate with them. And so it was, it was a really interesting experience. I'm so glad I did it. And frankly, it fine-tuned those relational and emotional intelligence skills as well, too. There's the long answer. No, I love it. And life does teach us a lot of lessons. And when we jump in and do something we may have never done before, I think that's that's the fun thing about life and how we learn new things. And it leads us to a path we never knew existed. I know so many of things in my life led me down a new path that I didn't even know existed. So how fun for you that it did that for you. Oh, my gosh. I look back at all of the experiences that I've had. And don't you just look back and you go, okay, why? I didn't really understand why I was doing the thing that I was doing 20 years ago. And how is that even going to relate to this thing that I'm doing now? And now it all makes sense. It's like everything happened the way that it was supposed to happen so I could help people in a unique way. You know, we forget that younger when we're young in our career, that everything will work out. Everything will happen like it's supposed to. We just have to keep showing up. And before we hit the record button, start of this, Heather and I were having a conversation about you just have to show up. And showing up makes such a difference in how one experiences life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And how many people don't show up? That's what makes you different as well, too. Is that it's consistency. It's you show up no matter what. You show up when you don't feel a hundred percent. You show up when no one else is showing up. And guess what? People remember will will remember you as the person who did what you said that you're gonna do and showed up regardless. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Here at Let's Fix Leadership, we often talk about the way we've always been told it should be done and think about why do we have to do it that way? Why can't we take a different approach that is more consistent with how we view and live in today's world? So 
when you think about that, that idea of what we were all supposed to look and sound like in past generations and what it looks like today, what are your thoughts on how things are evolving? Oh, Lord, I have so many thoughts on this. <laughs> Again, my background is a professional journalism, public relations, and even working as chief of public affairs, being the voice of somebody else, the perfectly polished, I call it the news reporter Heather look, that was what I was, I'm using air quotes for people who can't see, I was supposed <laughs> to be that way. Oh. I was supposed to be perfectly polished and had to be so mindful of everything that I said and how I showed up and how I did it. And I can honestly say as a business owner, and frankly, what I teach some of the executives that I work with right now, partners and firms, it's like, we want to hear your unique voice. We don't want the perfectly polished, I think, went away during COVID because COVID, let's be honest, <laughs> that's where the polish went away and their real stuff started to shine through in a very big way. At least it didn't for me. Yeah. I remember I told my husband, having three kids at home during COVID, the homeschool thing. And it was great. And he was working from home and all of the things. And I remember crying one time. I was unloading the dishwasher for the third time in one day. And I was just like, what happened to my life? Like, I used to be not this person that I am now. There was no polish. And but I think that we have been taught, especially I'm going to be 48 on Monday, but I'm in my 40s. And for those Gen Xers and even some of the older millennials that have been taught, you wear the suit, you say the right thing. You look like a robot, frankly. Yeah. And I think the types have changed to where it's like the realness, the authenticity of who you are as a person. That's what people really want. And so from a communications perspective, how do you message that in a way that lands and resonates with your ideal client? Yeah, that's, again, that's what I teach my people, you know, how to do that in an authentic way. Do we want to share everything about our lives? Probably not. Yeah. But who's your ideal client and what do they need to hear that would be beneficial for them? And so that's how I feel like things have completely changed is the polished news reporter look versus the real life look. And how do you message that? Yeah, it's so interesting. You use the term, the perfect polished news reporter look, because I remember several years ago, my dad looked at me one day at just eating dinner and he said, when are you going to cut your hair off like newscasters? <laughs> it's like, excuse me. And so yeah, I guess I thought for me to be a professional executive female, I needed to have short hair. So I was like, probably never. I enjoy my hair the way it is today. <laughs> wow. But it's interesting how society does put pressure on us to oh, look yeah. a certain way. And everyone has a view on that. And I think that as a leader today, hopefully the pressure is not as much. And we can't put pressure on other people. We have to really celebrate the unique voice that everyone has because that is what makes them fantastic. And I love that you help people find that unique voice. Yeah, absolutely. And it's all about, it was so funny, I was speaking to a large group of mostly CFOs and CRO type people yesterday. And I had the question from someone, how do I manage this diverse group of communication skills and skill sets and personalities? And I was just like, at the end of the day, you have to meet people where they're at. Not what you need, but and especially with employee retention. Jenny, you know about this more than anybody, but it's like retention is a huge issue. So what can you do as an employer, a manager of a really good team? You got to meet people where they're at, period, end of story. It's not about you. It's about them and fostering that relationship to where it's you're building a foundation of trust, not just what you need. And, and I think that has shifted, too. I remember I, when I first started out in my career Gosh, it's probably been 28. A long time ago. I'll just say I mean, not that long ago-ish. But it was not that long ago, but long enough ago to where I'm like, wow, things have changed. Management mm -hmm. styles have changed. It used to be top down. And now I feel like it's really a mix, as it should be. Anyway, I digress. But it's just you got to be people where they're at when it comes to communication. You do. And I love that you bring that up. I was in a coaching session recently and the person I was coaching was working on some things around overwhelm, competing priorities, all that stuff. And the individual was talking about what they were having people do. And I so I asked the question, are they doing it for you? 
or are they doing it for the progression of the enterprise? Wow. And what was the answer to that? The person said they're probably doing a lot of it for my needs, not the company's needs. And so it's interesting when we start to think about people showing up with their unique voice and having the ability to do that, they're doing it for the organization because the organization does better when everyone shows up as themselves and you're talking to more customers, more customers will connect because there's all these different personalities. And so when that leader in the room thinks everyone should conform, it's really conforming to their expectations, not the expectations of the company or the customer. Oh, wow. Yeah, hundred percent. Absolutely. That's so interesting. And again, I go back to if you're hiring people because they have such unique skill sets and bring a diverse skill set to the table, why would you not want to listen to them? What, why would we not want to do that? Anyway, it's fascinating. But yes, you got to bring it to them. I you have it. to. And it's part of leading in a modern world. So one of the things I think is fascinating about your approach is not only do you take your own experience to your approach, but you also put a little bit of analytics behind it. So tell us about how you use analytics to help someone understand their unique communication style. Yeah, typically what I do with my clients is I use a, an assessment tool called the DISC, D-I-S-C. I'm sure people have heard of the PI index, the Myers-Briggs. There's a million different assessment tools out there. And I think they're all fantastic, frankly, but I use the DISC for communication. What style of communicator are you? Let's talk about your ideal client. What style of communicator do you feel like that they probably are? And how can we marry that up? For example, I work with a lot of accountants who on the DISC, which D-I-S-N-C stands for dominant communicators, influencer communicators, which but those are both extroverts, are dominant people tend to be more results-oriented, very, very dominant, bottom line me type people, whereas the influencer type of a personality communicator is going to be that positive, energetic, enthusiastic, still very bottom line type of a person as well. Whereas our S and C types are steady relators, which are introverts, but they're people-focused. And our C types are introverts, but task-focused. So I tell everybody, our C types, think of a typical engineer or accountant. That's a C type person for the most part. Not always, right? But it's so interesting. I do work with a lot of accountants and they are the C-type. They're that conscientious, that task-focused, introvert, non-emotional, highly analytical, very precise type of a person, which is somebody that you would want yes. as an accountant, as an auditor or whatever, right? But here's the thing. If you're working with, and this happens all the time in this profession. So if you're a C-type, and you're working with a client who's C-suite and they're a D-type who are the bottom line me, I don't want the story, I just want the three bullet points type of a person. You can see where the conflict might arise because me as the accountant working with the client who's the C-suiter, who needs the, you know, the bullet point version, you know, that I, me as the accountant, I've got to understand my client that I'm working with receives information very differently than how I receive information. And so being able to have awareness as to how you communicate and how your client communicates can alleviate a lot of tension and a lot of, frankly, a lot of time wasted, time with the team. You're losing money if you're not paying attention to who you're actually talking to and how they best receive information as well, too. So that's just an example of Something that happens in my world a lot with the clients that I serve is you've got to be very thoughtful as to the type of person that you're communicating with and what do they need in order to receive that information. And again, I just do it. How do I do it? It's just through the desk. It's just a really easy, quick tool for this, per for this particular type of work that I do. It's just all around communication. Yes. And I I'm sure you the, so I know you work with all different types, but you do, do a lot of work in that accounting world. I'm sure they love having all that information too, because it helps them. Ew. It's just who they are, right? They want that information. Yeah. Oh, okay. this, this group of CFOs and chief risk officers I was talking to with yesterday, it's like they wanted, I had three people come up to me afterwards and they were like, do you have any handouts? Do you have any of this? And I just laughed. I was like, yeah. it's all on my website. Yes, you can download it all. 
I'm not the type of person who's going to read 25 page handouts, but hey, the more the better for that type of person. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So when you think about someone stepping in and really understanding who they are and understanding how to adapt their language so that they're other people are receiving their information the way they would want. What changes for them as a leader when they become more confident as a communicator? Oh my gosh. Wow. A lot of things can change. In fact, I'll give you an example of another client that I worked with. He was an accountant and she's a partner at a large firm. And interestingly enough, again, she was a partner. So business development is part of that partner track. And she's in the private equity healthcare space, which is highly technical as well, too. And this woman is really good at bringing in business, okay? And has been and will always be, I'm sure, as well, too. But about a year and a half ago, I was working with her. She had was going in for a pitch, yeah, for this private equity healthcare deal. And she brought in another couple of a partner or two with her and some subordinates and that kind of thing and with this pitch. Interestingly enough, she walks in, <clears throat> gives the presentation or whatnot, they find out that a day later that the CFO of this private equity healthcare company was just like, hey, we're going to go with you all, but we don't want to work with this partner, okay, this woman. And she was devastated. She was the one who brought the business to the table in the first place. And so she was like, whoa, they don't want to work with me? What's going on? And come to find out that the CFO of this business was just couldn't connect well with this partner. And so she and I got to talking about it. I was like, all right, I want you to take me back to the pitch. When you walked into the room, what was going on? You know, what were you seeing? What was happening? The first problem is she couldn't, she just was like, I don't know if I remember that, blah, 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 I think. Anyway, and it was so funny, one of her managers that's on this project as well, too, she, who is an I on the disc, so she's the influencer, she's the social talkative one. She was like, oh, don't you remember? I mean, people are talking about what happened in the weekend, their, their prior weekend and stories and all this stuff. So my, per- my partner, she walked in, found the HDMI cable. Yeah, that's all. She was just interested in hooking up her laptop and doing the presentation. She missed out on all of the nonverbal cues happening around her, and she didn't connect the dots. She couldn't smile. She didn't, she didn't even think to smile. She is a C-type on the disc. She just was looking for the thing that she needed to do the presentation and get out of there versus looking at the faces around the table and going, okay, I need to establish some relationship and rapport here. So anyway, started working with her on some of those nonverbal stuff. And it was so funny, about a month later, she texted me and she was like, hey, I'm going into a pitch and I just want to let you know that I put my arms down because she always has her arms across her chest like this. And she was like, I put my arms down. I smiled and I had a conversation and I'm like, oh, get that. It's fantastic. So fast forward a year, this woman is now being considered for managing partner of her firm. She's one of two people. Okay. Wow. That is a big stinking deal, right? Mm-hmm. Deal. And so talk about your income is here, which don't get me wrong. She was making really good money as a partner. But managing partner, we're talking three times the salary. So it's like, these are small shifts. I'm talking 10% differences that you can make when you understand how you come across and you're humble enough to go, hey, I really screwed that up. I want to make it better. How do I do it? Your world can open up significantly as far as income and opportunities and that kind of thing. When you can just be humble enough to go, hey, I need to make some changes. What do I need to do to make it better? Yeah, I love that story for a lot of reasons. Someone willing to get help, seek help, work with someone on something specific, willing to understand that they're already doing very well, but they may want to do better. And it always comes back to this communication and those relationships and everything comes back to those things for sure. And I love that. When you think about your journey, and we've talked a little bit about it earlier, but I'd love to know how you feel like you've evolved with your communication and how you build relationships over your time as a leader. How have you evolved? Yeah, again, the biggest evolution for me was when I was chief of public affairs for a state, the statewide elected official. Before then, I felt like everything that I'd been doing, the perfectly polished stuff was working for me. And then you get into working for an elected official. I'm still, I'm going to call it very polished, don't get me wrong. But understanding and re- yeah, seeking to understand, 
who the person was sitting in front of me because I was speaking to a lot of people on a daily basis. And it was a little overwhelming at times. And because it's a, it was a hotbed of political stuff going on as well, too. But really seeking to understand the person who was sitting across the table from me in a genuine, empathetic way. I truly was just, it was otherwise it'll completely burn you out. But if you flip the script and look at it like, okay, how can I help this person? How can I help this person understand what we're doing at a better level? Because maybe they have a level of understanding that's not where we are. So how can we bridge that gap? But that role just, it really catapulted me into a whole other level of, frankly, just my own personal development too. What can I do to make myself a better messenger? Because the traditional ways of going and meeting with constituents was, here's where we stand. And it's, that doesn't work. Like, it just doesn't work. And it leaves people pissed off, upset, not wanting to talk with you. And at the end of the day, I wanted to have conversations and understand so we could help make things better for as from a policy perspective. Maybe we needed to make some shifts there. Maybe people just needed to be heard. At the end of the day, you probably see this all the time with your business, Jen. It's like at the end of the day, people just want for someone to listen to them because they don't feel like they're being heard. And but that really does take a big shift in understanding how you are to be able to help facilitate that, so to speak. So that was a major shift for me professionally and personally too. Yeah. And I love that you bring up professionally and personally. I think that I work with people and help them think about lead, leading in today's world and all the challenges with that. And I always spend more time on that individual versus the their, how they're actually leading the team. Because when we show up, when we're in a good place, when we show up asking questions with confidence, with empathy, all that, all of those things, and the leadership just comes. It um, does. It just, it rolls up in it. And so I think that it's just such a great example that you've shared with the audience today around how listening to the person talking to you makes such an impact on the situation, on them, and honestly on us as the listener. Yeah. And truly listening, actively listening, putting the phone away. I was telling somebody about this just yesterday. I was like, I get so tired of meeting with people who their phones are up. I turn my phone over. I do have three children. And by 3.45 in the afternoon, I start getting kinged. And so it's like, got to be aware of that as well, too. But for the most part, it's like being an active listener, being present in those conversations and putting your own ego and motives aside and really the whole seeking to understand thing. What's going on over here and how can we make things better? And that just requires intention. Yeah, it does. It does. It it. it requires us to just show up as a self-authoring individual. The world is yes. happening. How do I want to enter it? How do I want to be perceived? How do I want to accept it? So yeah. when you think about finding your unique voice in the workplace, I know that there's a thousand things you could tell someone to do, but what's that one like nugget you would want to leave the listeners with today if they wanted to find their personal voice and get comfortable using it? Yes, I use the five levels of why. And I'll just explain for those who don't know, but we tend to go, I'm a communications expert. Okay, why are you a communications expert? Asking the deeper questions, the five levels of why this, getting to the root cause of why you do what you do and what lights you up about that. I have a lawyer that I work with and she's a family lawyer and she has her own practice and that kind of thing. And funny enough, she was not divorced. She didn't come from divorce, a divorced family or anything like that. She and her husband were married for 25 years. He was, his, he died a few years ago, but nonetheless, she was, she did not come from a divorced family. So it's like, why does this woman work with divorced people? And it was so interesting to hear her story of loss and grief. And it really was, she just wanted to holistically be able to tell women and men, she works with probably more women than men, help women be able to go through a divorce process with a heart of healing versus retaliation mm -hmm. and through just because of her own grief and loss. And I'm like, beautiful. That's a beautiful story to tell and why people would want to work with her over others, right? And so just getting down to the five levels of why Asking yourself the why five different times to really get to that root cause. And people may already know what it is, but if you don't, 
just really digging deep and figuring out your why really does help when it comes to your messaging and what makes you different, right? Because we want to share the stories that will resonate with our ideal clients, with our network, with our communities that makes us different, that makes us special, right? Because we all have stories to share. And that's, I don't, that's what I would say. What are your five yeah. whys? Yeah, I love that. Understanding your why and really why do you show up and then show up with that why front and center. That's fantastic. Yes. So if Absolutely. someone would want to work on their own personal communication, develop their own communication style, would love to work with you, how would someone find you? Yeah, I am on LinkedIn and Instagram primarily, more on LinkedIn than Instagram, it feels, but they can find me at Heather Lyle Co, Heather L-I-S-L-E Co, C-O on LinkedIn, or just search me up Heather Lyle. And that's where you can find me. I post tons of educational content every single day every single week. So also I have my podcast too called Game Changing Conversations, teaching you what to say and how to say it and bring on guests and talk through these, these stories that happen on the weekly basis, these learning moments that we can all learn from. So I would encourage people to go and listen to that as well too, but I'm on LinkedIn primarily. You can find me there. My website is heatherlyle.com as well. Wonderful. We will put all that information in the show notes too, so that people can find you. And I just want to thank you for spending time with us. I know everyone learned something, was able to take something away. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm.